Now let us look into previewing the data. Uh, so these are the different APIs which are available. And again, if you go to the documentation and if you go to the beginning index, uh, so you see transformations and actions. So typically we use actions to preview the data and different actions that are available are collect, count, first, take, and also reduce. So as part of uh, uh, this uh, topic, we'll only see these four different methods, which are primarily to preview the data. Reduce is, a, uh, is an action, but it's it's used for uh, some special purposes, which we might see a bit later. And also you, you see other actions such as save as text file and the name, as the name suggests, it's primarily to save the output into the path wherever we want. But to preview the data, primarily we use these four APIs. And sometimes we might also consider using take sample. Okay, just to check some or all the records in the RDD. And all these APIs are uh, on top of RDD. Once, you cre once we create the RDD, uh, we can use these APIs to preview the data. And as the name suggests, first, first gives the first record. Take takes a integer as argument, and it will give uh, those many records, whatever you pass uh, as part of the arguments. Collect will actually convert the co complete RDD into an array, and you can um, uh, uh, you can perform some uh, Python related APIs by converting an RDD into collection um, if you want but we we should avoid as much as possible and then count is just to give the number of records we have seen some of these already we will see all these things in detail now so for this you need to have Let me come out of this and clear the screen and I'm launching the PySpark session again. It will just take a moment once the session is created. I will create uh, the code snippet to read the data and I'll be using Sublime Text uh, to, to create the code so that we, if there are any typos, we can fix easily in Sublime Text and we can paste. Okay, so first thing we I want to do is, I want to create RDD by name orders, and I'm giving, I'm invoking sc.txt file API, and I'm giving the path uh, where I have the orders data, and the path is slash public slash retail underscore db slash orders, okay? And uh, let me copy paste this one. So if you see the command executed successfully, okay. But what what happened when when this is done? It actually uh, does not execute at this time. It does not read any data from from this location. It is just uh, it just got compiled into something called DAG, okay, DAG, which which stands for directed as I click graph. For the preparation of the certification purpose, you don't need to break your head uh, about this at all, uh, especially for HTTP CD Spark or Cloudera certified associate Spark and Hadoop developer. You don't need to break your head too much about this directed as I click graph. What you need to understand is whenever you invoke any APIs which are related to Spark. For example, text file is a Spark-based API on Spark context. If you use any API, unless the API is categorized under the action, it will not execute. It will not read the data in this location. It will only compile this code snippet into a DAG until there is an action performed. And one of the action you can see is orders.first, okay? and uh, um, and then it will try to fetch the first record. So what I mean to say here is, even if you have a typo uh, in a c.txt file, in the orders, if I say something like this, still, um, uh, even if there is no data uh, in that location, still it will compile and it will 
uh, it will create a DAG saying that it has to read data from this location. It will not evaluate whether this location is correct or not until it starts the execution of the DAG. And the execution of the, of the DAG will start only when we invoke an action. So let me show you this thing uh, in action. So you can see there's a tracking URL when we uh, launch the session uh, created. There's a tracking URL created when we launch the session. I'm using the browser here and going to that URL. OK, and you can see in the job section, even though I have ran a couple of lines of code um, which is related to Spark, still you don't see anything here. OK, and the latest orders is pointing to incorrect path unless I use an action called first with circular brackets like this. It will not try to read the file. And when it try to read the file, it could not find the path in this location. And it says input path does not exist. OK, now let us see if the if it has created any Spark job when we say order dot, orders dot first. So before um, executing the job, it, uh, when, when we perform the action, it try to look at the path. And as path does not exist, it, it failed immediately. So you you do not see any job here, even though we, we have used action because that action is failed because there is no path. We, we didn't see any jobs here. Now, if I fix this path, and now if I say orders.first, now it executed successfully. You can see the first record uh, in the RDD. And you can actually go here and refresh this. And you can see there is a Spark job executed. OK, so unless you perform one of these actions, like collect, count, first take, reduce, save as text file, take sample, etc., uh, no matter how many lines of code you write, it will only compile that code into something called DAG. And only when the action is performed uh, on a particular RDD, the DAG related to that particular RDD will be executed. OK? And if you want to see the DAG for any RDD, you can just say orders dot to debug string. This is, this is an API on top of RDD, which will give you the DAG details. OK? Don't worry too much uh, about it and try to understand uh, the output of this. Um, but if you want, you can explore and you can uh, figure it out. It is not very important for the certification. That being said, on top of uh, first, if you want to see n number of records, you can use a take of 10. OK. And orders.first will return um, a value, which is the data type of each element in the RDD. In our case, it's Unicode, uh, Unicode string. OK, so you can see the result immediately here. But when I say orders dot take of 10, there are multiple elements which it is returning. And uh, the input is of type RDD. Orders is of type RDD. And the output after applying this take function is nothing but list, typical Python list with 10 elements in it. OK, so you can run this. And you can see all the 10 elements here. If you want to print them properly, you can say for order in orders dot take of ten print of i. This is a typical Python code to print elements in the collection. Okay, I'm copying this print of order. Sorry, and you can see all the ten elements with printed uh, properly. So let me paste this code snippet here. Orders.first will give the first record. And another action that is available is collect. OK? And collect will take the entire RDD and create, an, uh, create a Python list. And RDD is distributed. So it can spawn into terabytes also if your cluster can support. An RDD can be distributed and uh, sit on multiple nodes on the cluster, uh, not necessarily at one point, 
but uh, as the data is being processed that one terabyte of data can be processed with the uh, larger clusters as long as it have enough capacity it will be able to read that one terabyte of data but when we use something like collect it will actually convert that multi gigabyte or multi terabyte uh, rdd uh, which is distributed on multiple nodes into a single threaded python list okay as it is single threaded python list it will be limited to the me memory size of your driver program which is 1 gb by default so if you are trying to convert an rdd which is bigger than 1 gb into a single threaded python array using collect it will start running into out of memory issues so you have to be extremely careful while using collect okay if you uh, if you try to just use collect to preview the data and if the rdd is uh, big there are two side effects of it it will take good amount of time to print all the elements second you might tr start running into out of memory issues okay so you have to be extremely careful about using collect okay so here it should be order order so you can see it is taking a bit of time to get all the uh, records from orders so typically you should use either first or take to get subset of records to preview or there is another api called count which is nothing but action on top of rdd so you can use this one and you can run count and uh, as count uh, uh, can be done on distributed fashion no matter how big it is it, it will not take a huge amount of time um, uh, as long as you have enough capacity on the cluster okay so if you want to preview your data make sure you use first or take or count and also make sure that you you don't uh, have these apis in your final program unless and until it is required okay one scenario where orders dot collect can be used is uh, spark have only 30 35 apis okay python might have much broader apis on top of collection on the final output once the all the processing is done on the final output if you want to use uh, uh, typical python collection apis and do some additional processing which is not available as part of spark apis you can use collect and do that uh, additional processing only in that extreme scenario you can uh, leverage collect otherwise don't use collect at all because it it might slow down uh, your uh, your progress especially in the certifications where it is time sensitive second one it can lead into out of memory issues and your program even though it's functionally correct it might start running out of memory issues and it can waste your time and it can cost your certification exam so be very careful before using collect okay and then uh, there are other apis also as i have explained um, uh, some apis uh, uh, which starts with save as we will use quite extensively um, but that is not primarily to preview the data so we will see the details of apis such as save as text file uh, towards the end of this module not now so for now just uh, understand the actions such as first to take and collect to preview the data and also count to preview the data and we will explore other transformations and actions uh, that are required for our uh, pursuit of preparing for the certification exams.